Hello everyone, this is Miss Imat. Uh, for today's video, we will be focusing on the second part of lesson 5.2, which is about function tables. And in this part of the video, we will be learning about choosing appropriate input values. So before we get started, make sure that you are able to watch the first part of the video for this lesson. That will definitely help you in understanding this video and this lesson that we're going to tackle today. Before we proceed to the main topic, let's have a quick revision about what we have learned yesterday about creating a function table. So the given here, we have a given rule, which is y equal to x minus 5. So that is our function rule, 2x minus 5. And our input is, of course, the x values. Output is the y values. And the input values are given. These are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. All right. Let's uh, solve for the output using the function rule. So again, we have to exchange the x with these numbers. So we will be able to get the output. Let's do that now. So y equal 2. And then the x, we will exchange it with negative 2. So we have 2 times negative 2 minus 5. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then minus 5. Negative 4 minus 5, the answer will be negative 9. Let's move on to the next one. We'll have y equal 2 times negative 1. Again, I exchanged x with negative 1. Minus 5 is equal to 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus 5, the answer is negative 7. When x is equal to 0, we have 2 times 0 minus 5. So 2 times 0 is, of course, 0 minus 5. We have 0 minus 5, and that is negative 5. When x is equal to 1, we have 2 times 1 minus 5. 2 times 1 is, of course, 2 minus 5. The answer will be negative 3. And lastly, when we have x is equal to 2, we will have 2 times 2 minus 5. And that will be 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. So again, to create a function table, you should know what are your input values. And of course, the function rule. And if you have those two, you can easily solve for the output. Alright, let's move on to the main lesson for this video, which is about choosing appropriate input values. To understand this better, let's have one example. Okay, so example number one. It takes approximately 770 peanuts to produce one jar of peanut butter. The total number of peanuts, N, so the number of peanuts is represented by this letter or this variable is represented by the function n is equal to 770 p where p is the number of jars of peanut butter purchased okay now determine the appropriate input values when we have this equation n is equal to 700 70p. This variable here is your output. And this variable here is your input. Okay. So we have to determine the appropriate input values. 
So since uh, we are looking for this, we have to focus on the input values or the P. And we know that P is the number of jars of peanuts, of peanut butter purchased. So you have to think, what are the appropriate values for P? What are the appropriate numbers of jars that you can purchase? Jars of peanut butter that you can purchase. Can you purchase one jar of peanut butter, two jars of peanut butter? Can you, how about negative numbers? Can you purchase negative two jars of peanut butter? So it doesn't make sense. You cannot purchase a negative number. Uh, can you purchase or can you buy 1.5 jars of peanut butter? I don't think so. So the appropriate input values here would be whole numbers. For example, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. No other numbers can be used. Why? When we use these numbers, so it means that 0 means that we did not purchase a jar of peanut butter. 1 means that we purchased 1. 2, we can purchase 2 jars of peanut butter, 3, and so on. Okay, so we only use whole numbers in this case. This is the appropriate input values in this given word problem. After we determine the appropriate input values, then we can complete this given function table. So we have the input values as 1, 2, 3, and 4. So how do we find the output like what we did before? So we will have n equal 770, and then we will exchange P with 1. So 770 times 1 is 770. So here is 770. Number 2. N is equal to 770. So instead of writing P, we exchange it with 2. So 770 times 2 is 1,540. The answer here is 1,540. Next, N is equal to 770 times 3, and that would be 2,310. So here is 2, 3, 10. And then the last one, we have 770 times P, or 4, and that would be 3080. 3080. So there you go. When you have a word problem, there are two things that you have to do before you can actually complete the given function table. First is to, up to know what input values you can put. Can you put decimals? Can you put negative numbers? Can you put only whole numbers or fractions and etc. Okay, so the first part is that. And then the second part is when you complete the function table already. Okay, so let's have another example. Example number two. An online photo printing service charges 0 0.15 dollars per photo and 2.99 for shipping the total cost c so c is for the total cost for printing and shipping any number of pictures p so number of pictures is p can be represented by 
this function. So this is our function. A. Okay. What input values for E make sense in this situation? Since we have the function rule 0.15P, this is our output. And this is our input. So we have to know what are the appropriate values that we can exchange P with. So since P is any number of pictures, what do you think are the possible number of pictures? That would be 1, 2, 3, 4 pictures, 5 pictures. So still it's a whole number. Why? Why can't I use, let's say, decimals? You cannot say that I will ship over 0 0.8 pictures. Okay, so you cannot say that. Of course, if you're going to ship a picture, it's it's a whole one. It's it ha it has to be represented by whole numbers only. So the appropriate input values here are one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, once we are able to determine this. We can go to the next step, which is actually creating the function table. Now, let's go ahead and create the function table. Okay. Now, this is our equation. And we have to exchange P with these values. So, let's do that now. The first one, C is equal to 0 0.15, and then P is 1 plus 2.99. If we simplify this, we have 3.99. So the answer here is 3. Point 14. Number 2. What if P is equal to 2? So we have to exchange P with 2. And that would be 0 0.15 times 2 plus 2.99. And the answer will be 3.99. So here is 3.29. The third one, we have to exchange P with 3 plus 2.99. And the answer will be 3.99. Forty-four. So here is 3.44. And the last one, we will exchange P with 4. Plus 2.99. The answer will be 3.99. Here is 3.59. Okay. Now we've finished completing the function table for this function, for this given equation. Now I hope everyone has their copy books with them because now we will proceed to the classwork. Copy and answer the following in your copy book. So you have here the given word problem first you have to do is to determine what input values make sense and part b is to of course create now the function table using any three input values so you can choose what input values you will make make sure to answer this in your copybook Again, this is Ms. Imat, your teacher guide for today. Till the next video, happy learning!